G'day, um, I'm Peter Sesselman uh, and I'm the maker of the Puck and Stomp, uh, Stomp Box and also the um, Peterman guitar pickups for acoustic guitars. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make your own Stomp Box for those DIYers out there and this is a kind of like a traditional type Stomp Box like the old Apple Craigs which had, um, you know, you stomp your foot on one side and it's got some rattles on the other side to make a bit of a rattly sound and it's been quite popular lately, uh, people like um, C6 Steve and, and things like that are using this type of units and they're building their own. I can see why, why people want to make their own, you know, so it's a lot of fun fiddling around the shed. Um, so I'm, I actually on my website you will find a, um, a kit that kind of shows you how to make your own as well. So this video I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to make what is called a Mississippi drum machine or a porch board or a stomp box or whatever you want to call it. So. First off, um, you need a wooden box. Now, I built this box, but you could probably find a box like this anywhere in any junk shop or something like that. Just make sure it's not too thin. A cigar box might be a little bit on the thin side, so you want to go a little bit heavier than that. Um, what I've done to save a bit of time here, I've drilled a couple of holes in it. I'm not going to show you how to drill a hole. I assume you know how to do that if you're going to build your own stomp box. So, you can see here, it says the wooden box. I drilled a couple of holes here and a couple of holes on the side here which have been recessed so that the jack plug will fit through and the nut will be able to screw on because this is a little bit too thick for a standard jack plug. So no magic, just drill a large hole halfway through and then a smaller hole all the way through and that will allow the jack plug to fit through. So that's pretty much it for the box. The other thing we have here is I've got a little metal plate just made from normal galvanized steel. Uh, People will use things like number plates. Uh, the best ones, I believe, are the Mississippi number plates or license plates for cars. Unfortunately, I'm in Australia, so they're not that easy to come by here. So I'm just using a gal plate. Um, the other thing I've got here is I've got a little strip of aluminium. I've got some screws. A couple of rattles from an old tambourine that I pulled apart. A little bit of... of um, foam with the sticky back, so you can peel off and glue on. So it's like a closed cell foam, it's, um, well, you can get that from any, any hardware store or rubber hotel. Um, I've got a glue gun, this is my favourite weapon of choice. Double sided tape will be okay too, but I prefer the glue gun. I've got a bit of wood glue, and I'll show you this, because even if you find an old box in a junk shop or something like that, you probably want to apply a little bit of extra glue to the joints just to keep the thing together. You will need some kind of drill and a few selection of drill bits and you know you need a, a ruler or something like that to make your measurements with. So um, and then of course you'll need the transducers which are available off my website. So this is the bass transducer, that's the one that gives you that kick drum sound. And um, this is the um, treble transducer um, which will apply to the, uh, the kind of tambourine rattle type thing and that will give you the high sound. So, I'm going to show you how to assemble this next. Okay, so, um, I got this piece of aluminium, and the reason I use um, aluminium is uh, it seems to have the, um, kind of like the highest ting sound. You can experiment with different metals, um, they all give different sounds, but I'm going with the aluminium. Um, I, you can see there's got some holes drilled in it there. Not necessary. Uh, they were just passed of a, um, a part of a past experiment that uh, didn't really work, so of very little consequence. So, um, but the, the two holes here uh, is where the unit's going to be attached to the box, so they need to align up with the two holes that you've drilled in your box, or vice versa. I'll drill this first and that after, or this first and that after. It's really up to you. It makes no difference. Um, so, what we're going to do, I'm going to assemble the rattle first. Um, I'm going to take um, my scissors and I'm going to cut two little squares of the rubber backed foam. Like that, just two little squares like that. And I'm going to stick those over the holes that are cut in the box. So they go on top like that. Then I'm going to put a Take a screw, put a washer on it, and I'm going to poke it through. So it pokes out the back. Another one on this side. Pokey pokey. There we go. Do the hokey pokey. So 
So it looks like this. And it come through the inside like that. Then I'm going to take my two tambourine rattles. You can use two, you can use four, you can use as many as you want. No, no restrictions. So I put those on like that. And then I take my aluminium plate and I put the two screws into the holes that I've made there. Hold that. I'm going to tighten the screws up. Enough so it doesn't hang out the bottom. We have inside here now, so you've got the aluminium bar with the screws and the two rattles on it. So, beautiful. A bit of a rattly sound like that. And I'm going to take my homemade license plate, uh, and that's going to be attached to the top here, the top of the box, like that. So, a couple of screws here. I'm just going to screw that into the timber. No real science in this part. You don't need an electric screwdriver, it's just, it's just a bit quicker, that's all. This screws on here. Something like that. And I'm going to bend that plate up so it's in the air. Okay. So it's not actually touching the screws underneath, it's up in the air. So when you on it, you get the connection of the tin to the screws, which then travels through and rattles the tambourine rattles underneath. So the next step that's required now, of course, is to install the transducers. So first, I'm going to install the treble transducer, which is um, a pretty much a standard guitar transducer or a custom-built one that we'll find on my website. So, and I, I like to use heat glue for this. That's just my my little thing. So I'm going to apply in the center of the aluminium here, a little double heat glue, a little bit in the center of the, of the pickup, just in the center, very important. And then I'm going to gently put that down onto the back of the rattle there. I'm not going to squeeze too hard because I don't want to squeeze the glue all over. I want to keep a little bit of an air gap around the edges of the pickup. That will give a, um, a better um, frequency response. Then I take the um, jack plug, put it through the hole, put the washer on, and then tighten the nut up. Use a small pair of pliers for this, it will fit inside there. And just give that a few turns. So that's it. So if you look here now, you can see that the pickup sitting there, make sure that it's clear of the, of the back. You can tighten those screws up if you, if you want to bring it further in, but that's okay, that's clear. And there's your jack plug there. So, basically, that part is now done. Now, next step is the base transducer. So, that looks like this. Okay, so we're gonna apply glue to the surface here and stick this, and we're gonna stick it fairly close to the back of the box, because it's stomping with your heel for the most of it. So put the glue onto the metallic surface first because that's the first to cool. So you want the glue to, to heat that up a little bit so you get a good bond. And we'll just stick that at the back here. A bit of pressure on that. Perfect. The little transformer which is in here. I'm going to glue that down as well so it doesn't rattle around too much. Again, this little blob of glue. And I'm going to stick that just inside the box keep it nice and secure. And then the same jack plug goes through the hole. Through like that. And again, put the washer on the outside. And tighten her up. Now there's many different ways of doing this, this is just one way. And I'm just showing you this as a bit of an example. So, that's what it looks like now. The base transducer sits on the heel there. The transformer has just been glued in situ to keep it safe. And the jack plug is now coming through the hole. Now, if you want to, you can be fancy and you can cut yourself a little bit of ply or something like that and make a nice little 
lid for the back of it to keep it all nice and secure. Since it's only a demo, I'm not going to bother. Now, what's important next is that this unit needs to have some suspension in it. Uh, for one, it'll slide across the floor if it doesn't, then also you won't get the full base response. So, again, using the double sided, um, oh, sorry, not the double sided, the rubber strip with the glue on the back, I'm going to cut some, some strips. So, I'm going to cut it down the middle, like a slightly thinner one, and I'm going to apply, and I'm going to cut that in half again. So now I've got this long, skinny bit, and I'm going to stick that just on the edge here, like that. And take the other one. Oh, we got. There we go. Beautiful. That's on there. And the same at the back. So again with the scissors. And do that there. And do that there. So you can see here, I've glued a bit of rubber in each corner like that. When you put rubber on the base, if you put a whole uh, lid on the back, don't use a too big a piece of rubber because it'll be too hard for it to, to have that movement in it that it needs to make the sound that you want. So that's basically it. It's not finished. It barely took a couple of minutes. Um, I pre-drilled a few of the holes, but that doesn't take that long either. So there you go. A Mississippi drum machine. Now I'm going to take it into my music section I'm going to play something for you so you can see what this uh, what this unit sounds like a lot of fun a lot of fun I'm telling you so I'll see you in the music part So as you can see, lots of fun. Uh, you can, the more you play it, the better you'll become at it, and the more you'll get out of it. So um, look, knock yourself out, you know, have um, have some fun with it. It's um, it's really cool. <laughs> now as I said, check out my website for all the details on how to make it, and also the parts that you need. And if you do decide to make one, why not drop me an email and let me know how you went. Uh, good luck. Catch you next time.